Glenn, are you here? I am here, Jason. If you like, we got our little special guest intro. Um, <laughs> wh where are you based out of? Uh, I am right up on the northwest corner of Washington State. So I'm literally looking at Canada uh, from where I sit at the moment. So that's funny. You and I are very similar. I'm looking at Canada, but all the way from Detroit. So we're actually, we're north of Canada, of Windsor. It's like the only place where there's a border and we're north of Canada. It's pretty crazy. Oh, I can technically look south and see Canada here because Vancouver oh. Island actually goes south from here. So it, so it dips back down behind me. Oh, you're, you're all the way by there. So what time is it over there right now? Uh, it's 1026 AM. Yeah. You're three hours behind. Have you always lived over there? I have. Yeah. It makes it tough for market hours though. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. So, I mean, you must be, are you a, like go to bed early, get up early guy? I do. I, yeah, I go to bed about eight thirty nine nine 9 at night uh, and then uh, get up about, you know, 5, 530 typically. So were, were you mad back in the day when the TV shows like were always late or the sporting events and you never got to see the ending of the sporting event? Um, well, I, I, I did a, a bit, but, uh, it wasn't, uh, I, I more, I was more of a sports guy where I actually did sports than I, I didn't really like watching it, but now I watch a little bit more sports cause I'm getting older. Got it. Got it. Okay. Now you have a awesome company. I've seen interviews. Um, but you know, EXP world holdings, EXPI, what would you describe? I mean, I described it a bit, but what would you say like the core of your businesses? Yeah, we're a uh, we're the first nationwide residential real estate brokerage that runs without any physical offices for our agents and brokers, or or we have the minimum amount that's required by uh, real estate license law. And so we did that in two thousand nine, quite frankly, because I couldn't afford offices after the housing downturn. But I also came out of technology, so I'd worked for AOL at one point. I I built an online service back in the day. I launched an e-commerce logistics company just before the dot-com collapse. So I'm a bit of a, a, a technology a geek. And and with that, plus uh, combined with residential real estate, which I got into in 2002 as an agent and, and, and learned the whole business, uh, just recognized that we could build a different type of residential real estate brokerage model uh, given where technology had come to in 2009. So we launched then 24 agents. We're now 47,000 plus agents and brokers. Uh, we're now in 13 countries uh, now. We've expanded, you know, quite a bit. You know, most of them are still here in the United States. We're 40,000 plus U.S. based, and then we've got a few thousand um, internationally. But you know, expanding all over the world. Pretty cool value prop too, because uh, our agents and brokers can actually recruit other agents and brokers, and and actually get uh, paid uh, benefits from recruiting agents. So we've got kind of a comp plan that actually allows them to be our sales force to to bring more agents in. And that actually translates across borders as well. So they, somebody can bring somebody in India or Brazil or Mexico or Canada or vice versa, and they can they can get paid for introducing people to the EXP opportunity. Yep, and we're gonna go we're gonna go over that now. I on the international expansion. When did you start going to other countries? Well, Canada, of course, we went to quite a number of years ago, just because it's it's our northern neighbor. Uh, but uh, in 2019, we opened up the UK and uh, Australia. And then last year, um, early in the year, we brought over a gentleman named Michael Valdez, who ran all of international for Realgy. And so he, he joined us. And, uh, and then he, he opened up four or five countries just in the, the fourth quarter. A ton of a bunch of new countries have already opened up this quarter. So He's a very aggressive international expansion plan. Um, and that's, you know, really where most of our, you know, near term invest investments are taking place is just to get all that infrastructure in so we can, you know, hit his growth targets. So how many years have you guys been doing this for? Uh, 11 and a half started in 2009 and uh, started again, started with 24 agents. Um, even this year we started, we, we got to 41,300 and change beginning of the year. Even since then, we've added another almost 6,000 agents. I think we're at 47,000 plus uh, today. So just over two months, we've added uh, quite, quite, a, quite a number of, uh, of agents to, to the platform worldwide. And, um, and we're going to go, we're going to go to your growth story and how the model works. But right before you started this, what were you doing before you start before EXP? 
Yeah, so I, I ran a boutique uh, real estate brokerage called Buyer Tours Realty. We had four offices. Um, and so I did that from 2007 to 2009. And prior to that, I was an agent at uh, Keller Williams, uh, ran um, six real estate teams. And then prior to that, uh, started at Prudential. And then and then prior to that, I was in uh, you know, technology startups. So I did a, a number of technology startups in the uh, uh, early, uh, well, late nineties and, and early two thousand. Got it. And so when you, you, like you and a few others had this model, like, Hey, we should change that game a little bit. It was early two thousands. And I don't know if it was your, you had another mentor that you're working with, but there was, there was something you, you wanted to change the game. And, it was, and it was, like, I don't know if you had this huge vision, what it is today, but like, what were those early days? Like where, when you had this, when you got this thing going back in 2000 and, you know, early, I mean, it looks like 2000, uh, I mean, this, yeah, like EXP was real. 2009 was yeah, the 2000. EXP portion. Um, so the uh, what ended up happening is I I learned all the pain points that I recognize, and so so I'm a you know being an entrepreneur, a business guy. Uh, I saw this residential real estate business that sold as a business to real estate agents that they own a business, uh, but it's really a business that owns them. And so there's there's really no retirement plan in residential real estate. Um, I went to Keller Williams because there was a little bit of a quasi re retirement plan there, so I thought that was that was cool didn't work out to be as good as as sort of the marketing brochure suggested so that's why i eventually went independent but we i just took notes uh on you know if if i ever had a chance to do the business again here are the things that we would do and so you know, there was a few of us kind of would bounce ideas off each other and it was really the backdrop of 2008 2009 that housing market crash that gave us a, a sort of a clean sheet of paper to take everything we learned and actually build this new model because our old model just you know, wasn't working. We couldn't afford offices. Transactions were, you know, 25%, 30% of the, the sales volume that we were just a couple of years prior. And so for us, we just said, hey, what are all the pain points for real agents, for people leading teams, for broker owners? Um, there's, you know, there's 2 million licensees in the United States. And we said, you know, with that many licensees in the United States, uh, we ought to be able to, to attract a number of people to our platform by solving their biggest pain points in being in the business. Got it. Got it. Got it. Make sure I'm on. Okay. And so this was, this model that you had was definitely not where the industry was at. I mean, this was it like make in hindsight, Oh, it makes sense. It makes sense. But this was not where the industry was at back then. And so did you get a lot of pushback from the traditional real estate brokers? Oh, tons, tons of pushback. You know, they said it would never work. That we, you know, this that, that you needed an office to actually run a real estate brokerage. Um, you know, we, you know, when, once we became a public company, they looked, they were looking at our finance. They'd take our financials because we were showing some losses for for a number of years as a public company. And they said, yeah, this company will never make a, make money. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know, they they made all kinds of fun of us, but we were attracting agents the whole time. Like we never had a month where we had fewer agents than we had the month before. So we've grown, we've grown uh, from from month one. Um, we grew, you know, 50% year over year. Um, and, and then, you know, 20, 2013, 2014, we introduced some agent ownership initiatives. That's why we became a public company. And, uh, and then our, our growth rate really took off. Then we started to grow, you know, hundred percent year over year, close to 200% year over year for a couple of years there. And, uh, and so even, even last year we had, you know, even though it wasn't hundred percent, it was still the, the denominator or the numerator. Anyway, one of those numbers was really big. And as a result, you know, we, you know, we still grew, you know, 60 something percent our agent base in, in a, um, what would, it was kind of a strange year for real estate, just given the, the, the pandemic and everything going on. D did companies like Realogy try to come and buy you guys? Um, no, uh, they, they didn't. Uh, I was actually kind of surprised that, uh, that some of these bigger companies didn't make, uh, inquiries, but I also recognized why they couldn't either, um, you know, a cloud-based residential real estate brokerage would effectively cannibalize the franchise organizations because they they generate their 6% franchise fees and the local broker owner has to charge 70, 30 or 60, 40. So they have, and, and, and if this new model came in and we're an 80, 20 model, so meaning agents get 80%, the brokerage gets 20 and we don't charge a franchise fee that, you know, agents would move, gravitate to our, toward our model if it was owned by the same parent company as say Century 21, you know, Coldwell Banker or maybe Remax or whoever. So, oh. 
so the franchisees would cry foul. And we saw it happen a couple times where where uh, one one um, uh, Gary Keller tried to do this kind of similar kind of thing where he was going to try to create a virtual brokerage. And uh, from what I understand, the some regional owners and franchisees basically threatened or did sue him to stop him from doing that because it would hurt their what they had invested in. Yep. Yep. I got it. So, so we're with Glenn Sanford, uh, EXP World Holding, Holdings, EXP Realty. Okay. So then, then the next question is you also in 2014, when you said your growth started to ignite, you also gave stock to, you made like an ESOP, a stock ownership plan for new hires or new agents. Is that correct? It, yeah, it is. It's, it's really interesting. We we went into 2014 with this whole idea of creating the basically something akin to an ESOP plan. Uh, the challenge is, is that ESOPs only work for employees, you know, W-2 employees. And so there isn't a, uh, a analog for that for independent contractors. So we had to, you know, work with legal and work with a bunch of folks. And I said, this is what I want. This is what I want. We had to go through a lot of iterations to come up with a model that would actually work. So we probably took us the better part of six to nine months, you know, trying to come up with the right mental frameworks and the might, right, what have you. But 2014, late 2014, we introduced the agent ownership initiatives. And basically agents get a, a, a token amount of stock for their first transaction. Now, now it's $200 worth of stock. Um, they get $400 worth of stock if they, if they pay us a full $16,000, which is what we refer to as their cap, the most that they'll pay us in any given year that they're with us. Um, and then we we introduced if they brought another agent to the company, they get four hundred dollars worth of stock as long as that that agent and and the person that brought him in stayed with the company for a minimum of three additional years. So all this stuff was kind of on a three year vesting program. So it created some golden handcuffs for our agents to want to stay with us. Um, and then we I think we introduced in twenty fifteen um, the ability for agents to actually take five percent of their commissions and effectively get stock at uh, a, at that time was a 20% discount to market, but now it's a 10% discount to market. So they you know, now have this additional ability to sort of build up an equity in, in the company. And then for our really, really top producers, they can actually get back their whole $16,000 in the form of equity. Some of it vests immediately, some of it takes three years to vest, but it's, it's a really cool platform. And we've literally you know, had agents become millionaires just from the equity side of participating over and above their their real estate production. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, that's a seems like an accounting nightmare to you know, the sixteen thousand and have it transfer to stock. I mean, that that seems like a, a, a nightmare, but you're able to do it somehow. That's why you got computers. You know, it's not it's not uh, it's not people sitting in the background doing this these calculations. It's all programmatic. We've built this whole platform called Enterprise that we have. It literally does all these calculations in real time. It took a while to get, get all the bugs worked out, but it it works it works well. And, and you know we've got a pretty good size uh, technology team that just makes sure everything works. But now we've actually got it working not just in the United States, but now works in all 13 countries that we operate on. In so it works does currency conversion. Wow. You know, each each country has a slightly different version of that plan. It's all programmatic. It all just happens automatically. Yeah, like I'm sitting here thinking, like if I'm an agent, why wouldn't I do that? Why wouldn't I do this model? But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take it even further back. So if I if I was I don't know getting out of I start I take the real estate class, get my real estate license, would I go to another bro like a exp brokerage that's here in Michigan, or would I go start my own? Like how 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 does that part work? Yeah. So if you just got your license, so you go sit for your, your exam, you get your license, you need to put your license with someone, you need to sit, put it with a brokerage. Um, and you would go, hey, so you may meet an agent, maybe talk to the managing broker and you go, hey, this EXP thing really makes sense to me. Then then you'll actually put your license there. We got new agent training. We got some mentor programs. We'll help you be you know productive. Lots of, you know, we've Anyway, but there's about 60, 100 hours of training that takes place in our, our cloud campus every uh, every week. Um, and, and then just with the camaraderie and the community, uh, we really talk about this whole idea of compensation, uh, community, and cloud-based. And that's kind of the three Cs of eXp Realty that makes it you know so unique as we kind of create this unique ecosystem and, and new agents can thrive really well in that model. Yep. And your stock, I mean, it's risen over the last several years, like a thousand percent. Yeah. Don't look today. 
I know, I know, the Omar, <laughs> I, I know, down sixteen. But the and and listen, I mean, I don't think you operated the, your business by looking at the stock on a daily basis. Um, no, it's a it's very much of a long it's a long game for me. I mean, we're playing the game to win worldwide, and we're really playing this game, you know, to be the the in our opinion, we we believe that we have the potential to be the single largest real estate brokerage on the planet at some point. And, and uh, so, I mean, so it's pretty ambitious. I mean, we've got some big goals. So, so let's say, so I start a brokerage, you have, you have this 80, 20 thing. So the 80%, how, how does it work? Like how does the 80, 20 thing? Yeah. So um, out of a commission, you would receive 80% as the agent for any of the listings or buyers that you represent that come to a closed transaction. Um, 20% of that would come back to EXP Realty um, up until you've paid in any given year $16,000. So on that 20%, and then you go to 100% for the balance of the year. So you, for the balance of year. So if you're if you sell a lot of property, you know your you know your effective split might be you know you know 80 uh, um, might be 90% or or whatever just because of the way it sort of averages out. But um, and then uh, you get some equity awards and some other things from just just your normal production. So that's a, that. Those are the other benefits that come along with that. Yep. Uh, but you're you're out there listing and selling like any other brokerage out there. You're you're going out to visit with sellers. You're you're working with buyers. You're potentially driving around in your car. Or they're following you to different properties that you and they think might be interesting. You're opening them up. You're helping them with that. You know all of the paperwork and 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 a, it's really. I mean, real estate agency is about um, managing emotions too, because these are big purchases for a lot of people and they don't understand this. They don't do this every day. And so, you know, having a, a trusted professional help them through the process. And that's, that's what a real estate agent is. Yep. And it, it seems like you've cut that $16,000 number for a few years. Are, are you guys ever going to change that number or how, what do you look at that as? No, uh, we, it's been there since 2009. So it's been, yeah. we literally, uh, we, we, we really, think we we nailed the model day one now that doesn't mean that we couldn't change it at some point but in all likelihood it wouldn't go up so just just so uh, you know a lot of people sort of and when i talk to investors they go well is there any way to maybe raise that number or raise your monthly fee and that, that's I, I get that question from, from investors all the time but we also work in a very competitive industry i mean there are other companies that have different models that might be similar maybe a little bit less expensive what have you and so we we're really clear that you know this is this is our model we think it's sustainable over the long haul and um, and and so that's just the way it kind of works and and um with that model then so the, the 80 20 part then how how do like if i'm a real estate and i work at whatever an exp place me as a real estate agent can i recruit can i recruit other real estate agents and make a a, a cut off them or anything like that yeah, that's that's what we refer to as our revenue share model. So um, you know, Keller Williams introduced or really pioneered what they referred to as the profit share model. And we actually took their model and just made it better. And we call it our revenue share model. And, and you can actually earn income off of agents you bring in uh, while they're paying in their $16,000 cap. Uh, if those agents bring in other agents, you can actually earn some income off of that. So you can actually get to basically build a business in the business just by attracting agents and we we literally have oh well a, a fair number of agents probably in the the dozens of agents that are making um full-time income just from the benefits that they've received from helping the company grow got it and so it's not just the guy that owns the, or girl who owns the real estate brokerage as an agent i can make money if someone else comes on absolutely in fact um the exp realty itself doesn't technically sort of do the recruiting. We're just, we really build the platform for yep. agents to do the recruiting. Um, we'll provide all the support, the back office, the yep. compliance, the training, uh, but the agents are doing all the recruiting for us. But I'm referring to like in Detroit, there's a thing called Mark Z Realty. Mark yep. Z ha runs an office, but if I'm an agent at Mark Z and I refer someone, can I still get a cut? Oh yeah, absolutely. And yeah, not, so Mark, Mark, Go ahead. Yeah, so Mark runs a team. So he he would refer to as a a, a mega icon team in the EXP ecosystem, yeah. and and so he's he's uh, chose to actually have a physical office of his own that he wants to to have for for his purposes. But the platform itself, agents from his office can recruit anywhere in 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 the world that EXP operates and and build a second stream of income. Got it. And so 
because you, you're not just trying to get any person just to go sign up an exp you want them to go join a group go join an office basically a virtual office it's not just go sign up on exprealty.com yeah we're we we don't we don't stop people from doing that because we do have a lot of people that do come directly to us but our primary role is to support agents and helping them grow the business so so that's our our role is to do that and then um, because we we don't really have the infrastructure to support the agents directly yep. uh, that come direct to us. So we'll actually spin those back to our agents uh, that are supporting the growth of EXP. Yeah, Mark Z, I think, is coming by here this week or next week, by the way. I never met him before, but you must know him, I take it. Oh, yeah. No, he's he's a really good guy. You'll enjoy him. Okay. So that so we're getting closer to where I'm going. So, the, so you, you guys have grown by this referral network. Now, do you charge the same commissions as like um, a Keller Williams? Yeah, so commissions are actually um, negotiated between listing agent and the seller. So even even though you know uh, commissions, I think on on average are about five point four, five point five percent nationwide. Our agents would be in that same range. Like so, so they might be three percent on the list side, three percent on the buy side, or they might be two percent, two percent. They it's really market specific. Some markets have slightly different nuances at the local level, but it's uh, it's not dictated by the company at all. It's all done in the field by the listing agent in conjunction with the seller. Got it. And then they're asking in the chat, what do you um, the, the stock split? What were you thinking there on the the split, and why did you guys do it when you did it? Yeah, so uh, we we I think we announced that the stock was like seventy dollars or so a share, something like that. Um, and um, because if you think about our first real estate transaction that agents do each year, they get two hundred dollars worth of stock. And when the stock's like let's just say ten dollars, well, that's twenty shares. That's that's seventy nine going on potentially you know some larger number. That's that's two shares or two you know two two and a half shares. So we wanted to make the number of shares more meaningful. Uh, for the various stock awards. So that was really the the big purpose for us was to just make the number of shares more meaningful for agents as they're receiving them, uh, as opposed to it looking, you know, fairly expensive. So if we kept on running, you know, and, you know, obviously I don't have a crystal ball on the stock, but, you know, if it was $200 a share, it'd be kind of weird to only get one share of stock. Yep. Yep. I, I understand that. It just makes sense. And, you know, the market's the market and it will follow good companies. So the other question on the stock per se is they're asking about insiders uh, selling. I know you pro probably have set stock plans. Was there something that was unique or a month ago that I don't know cause these people are asking me about? Yeah, no, um, I've had a since uh, last year, um, uh, I've had a 10 B51 plan that I've had in place, which is just a just a regular stock plan. So I've like this year, just to give you put it in perspective, I'm selling about 2% of my holdings over the course of a year. So you'll see a little stock go out every week based on whatever the stock's at. And so that's just part of my, yeah. my overall plan. But um, those are the, uh, generally the, the stock sales are going on um, right now are all 10 B51 plans. Standard setup plans. That's, that's what yeah. I thought. Now, are you guys in the, are you, or are you in it? Are you in the title uh, business at all or? We do have a, a, a title joint venture called Silver Line Title and Escrow. So we do, and we've expanded that to quite a number of states. I don't know the exact number, but I, you know, fifteen states or so, where where um, our clients can kind of do that. So we've got we've got that joint venture. We've got a mortgage uh, joint venture called uh, Intraland, which is uh, and and so we've been trying to figure out how to make these all attached to the real estate transactions because if we can crack that code, then as you might imagine you know, our revenue per transaction goes up dramatically for the brokerage. So, so we're, we're working on that. We just bought a company last year in July called Showcase IDX. Um, and so we can actually build out our own national portal that eventually in our minds will compete with the Zillow's, the Redfin's, the Realtor.com's. Well, what does Showcase IDX do? I'm going to know. So okay. Showcase IDX is a basically a uh, real estate search solution platform. So it was really designed for agents or small brokerages but they had all of the the, the plumbing and, and tooling to basically build a national platform. And so we bought them to actually build a, our full on custom website. And so once that all gets built, like later on this year, our goal is to have mortgage and title and some of those other, other features actually built into that platform. Um, Got it. 
got it that makes that's that's where i was going with it um they have a lot of stuff with seo i see it okay and that's where i was going with that so you're, you're gonna have mortgage title more aligned i just didn't you know because i know real estate and that usually have relationships like there's some respa but you you know you have the partnerships pro properly and i think you you guys are probably old hats at that um so zillow you would see is like this sh showcase idx could give you a zillow type experience Correct. Yeah. As old type experience. And then, you know, and we've even, um, you know, the, the iBuyer, the, uh, the open door, the Zillow offers type of platform, you know, we, we launched a platform, um, about a year and a uh, little over a year ago called express offers. And you can actually see it at expressoffers.com. Um, but it's our answer to the iBuyer. So we've got basically a way for consumers to start to enter their, in their property addresses, get, get buy uh, offers from, um, uh, buyers who are looking to, to potentially buy their home um, to, to do the same types of things that uh, uh, that Zillow offers would do, except we're not taking any of the balance sheet risks. So we're actually working with hundreds of, of buyers on the back end who are looking to actually buy properties in, in lots of markets around the U.S. But, uh, um, but what I, so when I look at this, uh, do you see the screen up right now? I do. Mm-hmm. So what happens? I put my house in and what happens? Yeah. So if you're in a market where express offers exists, uh, then it's Are, going to- is it, is it in most markets or no? It's in about uh, 30 states now and, and not all the cities in, in each state, but we're, we're, we're you know, building that on a nationwide basis. But if you entered it and it fit what, what's referred to as the, a buy box of one of our buyers, then they would make an instant offer to you uh, on that property. Uh, it would also go to uh, one of our EXP realty agents who would actually present that offer to you and then also des describe you know, what a fully marketed listing might bring you instead. So, so you'll get the, the best of both worlds. You'll get to see if I go this way, here's what it is. If I go fully marketed, then this is what, what it is. And generally speaking, a fully marketed listing is going to you know net a seller significantly more. Uh, we did the math on like Zillow and uh, the average consumers, um, you know, spending about eleven point four percent versus about five point four percent in uh, uh, using a, a, an agent on on a real estate transaction. So, so we want to just be in there. We've got you know we're generating some lead funnels for agents, and and they're able to then use this to to generate listing leads to go potentially have exp realty signs yeah. out in the ground yeah that's where i was going to go so i see you're not in michigan so i guess i'm not listing my house right now um any reason why you're not in michigan is it like lightning? well it's just uh so you, we're obviously exp realty is in michigan of course. But express we'll yeah express offers just hasn't ex we just don't have any um buyers on the back end in michigan yet as soon as we do we will we'll pop that back up and we'll, you'll be able to if you wanted to instantly sell your home, you'll be able to find out what an offer might be. So no, so that's good. So there, when you say buyers, is it investors that are like looking for discounted homes for these express offer type things? Is yeah, it could could be um, could be investors, could be anybody who's looking uh, to buy a, a large number of homes. I mean, we we work with um, some some of the buyers are literally buying for their rental inventory, and they own thousands and thousands of homes, and so they're in there making offers on, on, on homes. Uh, but some of them are looking at fix and flip. We, we work with the uh, one company Wedgwood, which is the largest fix and flip uh, company in the nation. So, so from that perspective, um, you know, uh, you know, they, they're going to take all that scratch and dent inventory and make offers against them because that's their sweet spot. Got it. And so the reason I, I bring that up, cause like when I see that, you know, express offers i'm thinking it's just a lead gen tool get my info and then i want to sell my house that's what i was thinking but there are actual buyers on it etc oh yeah yeah we've got we've got hundreds of buyers so, and i mentioned wedgwood just as one yeah yep. but, but they buy like six thousand homes a year got it got it no that's that's that's, that's amazing so you have i mean this is a nice nice tool and then you bought success magazine what what was the thinking there is that to educate the realtors on how to grow their business and uh, what was the reason uh, to buy that? Yeah, a couple of things. One, we were already mailing the magazine to all of our agents. So with that, we became the single biggest customer of Success Magazine. And so um, the the owner was looking to sell and he said, hey, would you be interested in buying the magazine? 
And, and I said, for sure, you know, we got success.com, which is an awesome domain. But the reason why it made sense for, for me was because we want to make sure that we've got a really good competitive moat for the residential real estate business. And personal development is core to any sales, um, especially, you know, and, and real estate sales is right in there. And so by having the longest running personal development brand in the history of personal development, so 180, 100 and 125 year brand, it's been around and Napoleon Hill was an editor, um, Yog Mandino. I mean, you just, there's just so many people that were involved with this. Tony Robbins has been on the cover like four or five times. So it's such a iconic brand for anybody who's in sales that it just matches up really well with the idea that, you know, real estate is really um, what we do, but, but it's personal development that makes us do it well. Okay. I'll ask, they want, they keep asking me to ask a question about trends. What are some trends you're seeing in different markets, growth areas, rental areas? I don't know. I mean, you can give a broad thing, but I know, I know it's hot these days, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously we're, we're low interest rates drives, uh, drives this the whole engine. You know, as long as we've got low interest rates, we're going to continue to see markets perform really well around the country. As long as the Fed keeps on pumping money and we got the stimulus package coming in yet again, all this stuff just continues to keep the markets pretty, pretty hot. And uh, as long as that goes on, I think the flip side of it is, is uh, just for us, we're actually designed to be successful in good times and bad times. So if the, if the market starts to take a, a dump um, uh, and, and real estate offices have to start to close, well, we're able to actually, because we have no physical offices, we don't have any of that fixed expenses, we can actually do really well in a, in a bad market. So we don't have any of the, the trapping. So m my prediction is that even if we have a really bad market and you see pretty much every real estate brokerage across the board lose money because of their fixed expenses, we'll actually continue to make money because we have almost every one of our expenses is variable based on market conditions. So... So at the end of the day, you guys really, I mean, you're trying to compete. I mean, the Keller Williams model and just offer better, better, like cloud-based things, not have to pay as much money, that kind of stuff. Like that's what you're, you're trying to get those guys who would open a Keller Williams office to eventually open an EXP office. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the game we're playing right now. The, the big game that we're playing, uh, at least domestically is we, we think that, you know, Zillow is really the company that we're competing against. So, so when we think about, you know, long-term, you know, who, who are going to be the big players? Well, it's going to be Zillow, Compass, Keller Williams, Redfin, um, EXP, and, and maybe there's, maybe there's somebody else in there, but there's, there's open doors. So those are, those are the six players that at the end of the day that I think will, will sort of win this game at some high level. And, and, and when we think about it, you know, who is the, who's going to be the, the one that we really are going after and that is uh, most likely uh, going to be Zillow, and that's going to be the company that we have to continue to to pay attention to and and continue to iterate in the short run, so we can so we, when we get to the end game, we're we're in a good place to compete against them. And do you find most of the people that are using like EXP are they using the app? Are they on the website? How does that work? Um, well, right now they're they're using the website, so we don't uh, we don't have an EXP Realty uh, search app at this point, but that's you coming. That? Yeah, okay. for sure. I mean, you I mean you've grown so tremendous, like so tremendously in the last like year and a half that I've seen. I mean, I've seen videos, and I mean the whole mission of the company. I you know I just uh, and didn't you get involved? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't want to say it, but Grant Cardone. Yeah, yeah. So I'm actually going to speak at his event uh, end of next week. But uh, I was actually going to get coffee with him when I was in Florida. I messaged him the night before I was leaving because I'm like, I just thought of it. We were right by his office in Aventura. So we didn't do it. We're going to do it next time. But um, yeah, what's the situation there? Yeah. So uh, Elena Cardone is getting her real estate license. She's putting it with the XP. Grant has already sort of went in and he's starting to promote that uh, that side of things. We're We've got a, a little bit of a, a term sheet we've been trying to get to some sort of uh, of something with Grant, but Grant's, you know, Grant's Grant. He's like a, he, he just keeps, a, he's a mover and hard to tie him down. And, but we're going to put something together with him so that he can be, you know, have a little bit more of a spokesperson role out in the industry. Cause the guy has, you know, so much social media credentials. It's just crazy. The, the amount of attention he could, uh, he could bring to, to what we're doing. Not that we haven't been growing already, but, 
uh, he, he was talking about napalm and kerosene and blowing it up. And so we'll, we'll see what that looks like. Yeah, exactly. You should see some of his club. You know what Clubhouse is? He does these Clubhouse things. Oh yeah, in fact, that's where he and I met. He and I met on Clubhouse, and then oh uh, really? And then he he and I and uh, Tim Story on Sunday night were having a conversation, and so he and I chat are 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 bantering quite a bit on Clubhouse. That's where okay, and that's what I yeah I do I do a Clubhouse thing on Friday. This guy Josh Brown. If you ever watch Fast uh, Halftime Report on CNBC, we host a Clubhouse on Fridays at three o'clock every day every Friday. And so, but that's where I was seeing Grant and I was right next to down the street. So next time I'll get with him. But I thought this slide was was interesting here. Um, I have a slide up from one of your decks, the brick and mortar, blockbuster uh, circuit city. And that, that's how you guys see yourself. This is what you see. Yeah. And, and, and in addition to that, you know, the, because we, you know, you, if you think about, you know, blockbuster was physically based, you know, circuit city for physically based, traditional real estate brokerages are physically based. You know, everything's went online. So you think about the whole idea that, you know, you're not going to the rental store. You're, you're, you've probably shopped two or three times in the last two days just on Amazon and, and, you know, being able to just go into the virtual office just makes, uh, makes a, a ton of sense in term, terms of, of course, in this last year with the, with COVID. I mean, we were so well positioned. I mean, we didn't even miss a beat other than we had to make some staffing changes in April last year. Got it. Got it. And the last question I'll ask is someone said the search engine in Canada needs to be improved. <laughs> so. They're right. They're, they're absolutely right. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, we're, we're, we're um, <laughs> sort of somewhat uh, changing out engines and all kinds of stuff on a regular basis uh, uh, while the rocket is, is in flight. And uh, um, we just uh, flipped over to the showcase IDX website um, as, as an MVP in Canada back in November, did the same thing in the U.S. And now we've hired a bunch of engineers to actually go in and now improve that search experience to be first class by toward the end of the year. So, all, so all in due time. And this is a, and these are this is the last slide about all your partners, 360 Tours, and uh, I mean it's an exci it's an exciting story. The growth has been tremendous, and. You know, you're using the power of people to uh, refer people to your own business, and yeah. makes a, makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. I know Mark Z is huge in Detroit, so or at least in Michigan. Uh, yeah, yeah, he he is. He's a and he's a super great guy. So when you do get a chance to to chat with him, tell tell him I said hi. I will. I will. Anything that I didn't ask? I know I did. This is pretty long, but anything that you want to say about EXP before uh, we head off that I didn't ask? I know there's a lot more questions in the chat, guys. Can't get them all. They keep asking me. Yes, agents can get stock. Agents can get stock. Yeah. So yeah, and you saw the virtual world piece. I mean, we bought um, that that company Verbella back in 20, uh, 2018. and um, it's basically where we go to work every day. And so you somewhere in there, you can see kind of the way that the office setting works. And we we have auditoriums with fifteen hundred people in them, and and training rooms and. And all, all the all the trappings of a back office. You actually go. What do you mean you go in here? This is a, this is our ver this that's that's you're looking at our world. That that's literally how I go to work every day. I go to work as an avatar, and and show up in an office, and people come in, walk up to me, say hello. Saves saves. Uh, nobody gets Zoom fatigue, which is awesome. And uh, this last year, you know, it's it's kind of this. You, you know, we've invested a fair bit into it. But this last year, we've had everybody from Deloitte to PwC to, to tons of companies, uh, Stanford, UCSD, Arizona State University. Um, um, you know, I think uh, Google, Microsoft have been in, in various different campuses for different events. So we've done some really cool stuff with this that's been just um, a technology that really helps us for relative to the pandemic. Uh, Spencer, this is a bad hands. This is awesome. You should be an event company too. Now, this is software we could use for our Benzinga events business. Uh, this is this is cool. I mean, this is getting together and being virtual, but being together. I'm gonna go play. Can we go play soccer today, today Glenn? Let's go. You do can. That. Yeah, the Verbella. If you go to verbella.com, uh, you can actually go in and go to the soccer field, and you can start kicking the ball with uh, with some friends. Or some flag football. That's what I do. Um, all right. Well, man, it was great having you on. Um, I know we the, you're you're on a lot of the users that we have 
we're asking about to bring this your company on and seeing the growth has been tremendous. And I feel like it's the new way that real estate offices are being assembled uh, with using the cloud-based system. I mean, you got Ring Central, you got Twilio, you got all this stuff. Why not have it cloud-based in real estate? That's that's how I see it. So we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come on and educate us. I know I asked a lot of basic questions on the company, but those were the questions I was getting before. And um, I think it's good to tell the story and learn about it. And uh, we'll see what happens with Grant Cardone and uh, in the near future. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Jason. I really appreciate having, having me on. Yep. Thanks, Glenn. Have a good day. You too. Um, yep.